All right, folks, it is time for um, the much awaited TWIP, <laughs> Twip live, screen, live stream. We've had some scheduling <laughs> issues on both sides, technical issues, all kinds of stuff. But I am committed to doing this live, which is what we're doing right now. And somebody right now decides to call me right at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Wait, normally <laughs> we're about done, right? Yeah, yeah, normally. Like, this is like, it's a confluence. Let me bring you on, on screen, Trey. It's like a, um, it's a confluence of conspiracy to not get this critique done. I don't know what's going on. It's, well, you know what? When uh, you do your last program today at PPW, you can, you can share <laughs> the live streaming. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I totally am. I totally am going to explain that, you know, sometimes it doesn't go as you plan, no matter, you know, how much money you throw at it, how much time, right. how many right. YouTube videos you watch. Sometimes it just all goes to hell. It doesn't matter. It's just, you yeah. got to roll with it. You got to be a leaf on the wind. Yeah. I'm a leaf on the wind. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So this week's uh, Troy Miller, this week's critique topic is slash was color. So we challenged oh, challenged our people to or the, or the community to come up with their most colorful shots, and it looks like they came through. There's a lot of color in there. What do you think? There is, yeah. And uh, normally we get a chance to chat ahead of time about some of our favorites, but we haven't done that. So this is completely off the cuff. Yeah, this is 100% off the cuff. And I like doing it live like this for I reasons I talked about last time. Because I'm over on the YouTube chat and uh, Eric Pronsky's in there. Eric Pronsky, MD, is in there. Hey there. Uh, Kazmir is in there. So, you know, people will pop up in there and we'll, we'll interact in the chat at the end of the critique, I think, Troy. Instead of oh, okay. making this a four-hour long critique. You know, if something pops up in there during, we can address it. But for the most part, I think... You know, maybe push that to the end <laughs> so, so that we could focus on on the critique itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm jumping in there and I'm, I'm pausing that so I can see the chat coming through there. Okay. Yeah, this is cool. This is live. So in yeah. the chat room, chat room, folks, uh, before we dive into the critique itself, I'm curious, what's the quality of the stream? Does the stream look good on your side? Is uh, how's the audio sound? Is you know, does Troy's back cave look good? <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Except I, I, I don't have color on one side. That's I haven't I haven't figured out how to get the the power to the colored lights over there. So oh, look at that! See, I wouldn't have even known if you hadn't drawn yeah. attention to it. Yeah, so. now now when we're going live, you know, I think of those things. I'm like, ooh, it's not balanced. I'm ill balanced. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. <laughs> All right, let's do this, man. You ready to dive in? Let's talk about some color. I am. Yep. All right, so um, is up over here. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the MacBook Pro, which has Twip Pro running on it. Nice. And here we are. So I'm going to go into our topic area, and we're going to go into Photo Critique, and I'm going to sort these by the date created. So Good. if you're at home, you can follow along with us as we go through these, if you're a member of the Twip Pro community. That's right. All right. So let's dive in. Tim just squeezed his in under the wire. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I told him we were going to be recording, so he threw that in really quick. He got one in there. Yeah. Okay. What did he say about this? You said color. Okay. Let's take a look. Yeah. That's colorful. I I love it. It hurts my eyes a little bit, um, but you know it's it's super fun. I like the uh, the neon circle. I know he's been playing with those a little bit, so it really it really fits this subject well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, you like the dead space? I, you know, I do. Normally, I wouldn't like it as much, but I think that with the personality and attitude of this particular image, uh, I, I really like it a lot. I mean, I think that it for me, I would probably crop off half of that vertical space, but it's okay there. You know, I, that's that's the portrait side of me wanting to fix the crop. Yeah, I kind of like that dead space in there because it, it it looks definitely with the color palette, it looks intentional. Right. 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's sort of that artistic, abstract, you know, fashion-y look, which is, which is totally cool. For sure. For sure. Good job, Tim Engel. Thank you. All right. Let's move right along. The next one is up from uh, Stephen Scharf. Hey, Stephen. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Stephen I love says, the Copen feel. Copenhagen Bicycles. Copenhagen, Denmark with his Fuji X-T1. Let's take a look. Yeah. 
I actually, we don't normally, I don't normally like the stream colors better, but I think on the stream, they're coming across more saturated. The blacks are going blacker and the colors are saturating. And I think that that's kind of what this image really needs for me is that it just needs that little extra pop of color um, to push the colors, you know, for, for this. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I just wish the highlights around the windows weren't blown out. You know, up at the top. They're, they're not that blown out. Well, they are on the stream, yeah. On the site itself. Look at the image on, on Twip Pro. He's retained the highlights. Yeah. There. Yeah, they're not they're not blown out on the actual site. In the stream, they're coming through as really hot. You're right. Yeah, no, it definitely definitely does look good. No, I, I really I really dig this shot. It's very abstract, very artistic, very street. Um, and, and it's a really good use of color. I mean, you know, that yellow and then the red kind of in that same palette range, that same color range fits really well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it needs a bride in the window. Up there. <laughs> no, no, no. She'd be leaning on the right on that little, that little handrail next to the door. She'd be leaning right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dress that's right. kind of pulled out towards the bikes and yep. Yeah. Sunglasses on. She's got to have sunglasses on. Oh, see, you're seeing the shot. See, that's what we're talking about. Of course, of course. Love it. Cool. Steven Sharp, good work, man. Thank you for submitting. Next up is Kai. What does Kai say? Kai said, we are all made of RGB. (laughs) Macro image of an old iPhone display. That's very true. We are. Yeah, it is full of stars. Full of stars, yep. Yeah, this is very this is very cool. I really like this and and completely abstract. I mean, this could be a modern art piece, whether it was made just for this or like Kai did, he photographed an old iPhone display to show those show those RGB colors uh-huh. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I dig that. I I just I was since my back in the day when my dad explained to me about how RGB worked and how our eyes work and you know by placing different colors next to each other we could create new colors all that stuff I, i've been fascinated by that yeah and even today you know you look at billboards you get close on a billboard what do you see yeah yeah right? well, printing <laughs> printing is the same way we don't realize yeah. that but you know you look at magazines uh that's how that's how the colors are printed yep yep cmyk yeah yeah no this hey. is this is beautiful i love the composition i love you know the color palette the form the shell of the field Really not a lot to add to this. Very well done. Yeah, very well done. It's, it's this classic uh, Kai right here. Yeah. Hey, Troy, Alicia is in the chat room. She says she's pretty excited to have this casting to her living room TV. Oh, to help, nice. Help her spend the rest of the day. Hey, we are hanging out in Alicia's <laughs> living room right now. Yeah. I love it in here. This is really nice. Look at that furniture. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little a little uh creepy inception. yeah <laughs> yeah that's creepy yeah it's a little dark yeah what's what's with that what's with that blanket over on that chair alicia could yeah. you move that <laughs> <laughs> what's in that cup what is in what's that, in that cup? cup what's in that cup right there all right kai thank you sir next shout up is from peter levshin peter says electric blue man group china this is crazy what is going on here, by the way? It really doesn't fit the color category, Peter. I mean, you know, we love you and all, and we let you get away with a lot of stuff. Um, but I don't, I, this must be some kind of show from when he was uh, on, his, on his trips abroad. I don't know if he's, Peter, if you're in the, if you're in the YouTube chat, you know, let us know. I, I love the composition. I love the, you know, the abstractness of this. You, the, the dancers are soft. Or there's mo- movement, right? Mm-hmm. And I like that, um, but there's no color. Yeah, what's up with that? What's up? Peter? Did you not see the uh, the, the call <laughs> to action for this for this critique? Where you know, I think there's another one in here that's monochromatic. Someone submitted a monochromatic shot. Yeah, so we'll have to talk about that as well. But. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it, it, it's a great shot, and, and I would—I don't know where the image stops because of the background uh, that it's being displayed on is black. So this is where a key line would be really helpful in this presentation mode, right? So we could kind of see uh, what's going on in there. And see where the end is, where it begins and ends. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah. Eddie Lagos is in the chat. He says Blue Man Group. It looks green. Yeah, Peter. What's up with the Green Man Group? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he's old. He can't see. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm old. I can still see. <laughs> That's no excuse. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Peter Levshin. Thank you, sir. Amy Brooks is up next. Amy says, besides singing Crimson and Clover all day, I was also singing Lady in Red. Oh, Both nice. sung badly with her Fuji. Nice. With I was, I was singing a, a man they called Jane from... <laughs> <laughs> see you and that jane it's thing, in right? my head it doesn't go away man <laughs> oh geez oh i so really what do you think how does this fit into color uh i think this fits into color really well um you know because really without that color in the background the the white four flowers don't stand out as much so yeah. this is a use of color as helping us with depth and and layering and you know uh composition yeah. So I I really like that. I I'm trying to think about the crop. You know, my my brain says that we have too much space vertically, and I would like to take some of that off, maybe half of it. But I like how it's not perfectly centered either. I feel it's a little bit to the right, camera right, and I like that. I think I would have liked it more to camera right if we were going to skew camera right, like more lower thirds, kind of like Tim's image, how he mm -hmm. intentionally put the 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 model in the front or in that lower right third. Yeah. I think I would like to see this in that same kind of position and maybe lose the the flower. This one down, this one down here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe I even crop up like right there, but move these guys over here a little bit or, you know, crop them over there. Yeah. Any, anytime you put something <clears throat> bright in the corner, it's always going to attract our eye and then it drags us out of the frame. And the goal, you know, our goal is to keep our, our viewer inside the frame. Mm -hmm. And so by cropping that off, uh, burning it down probably won't even even do as much. I mean, you could grab another flower from somewhere else outside of frame and bring it in there mm -hmm. and fix that up. Yeah. Yeah. Cool shot. I like the color. I like that. The, the color, that sort of wine color of the flowers is one of my favorite colors. If not yeah. My favorite color. Yeah. As and, you, you know, can see all over the TWIP website. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Look, at, I'm wearing the maroon shirt today just for you. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. It's all about the red and black, man. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Even my favorite flavor is cinnamon. See? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's red and black, right? All right. Here we go. Thank you, Amy Brooks. Next up is Eric Pronsky, who's in the chat, right? Hey, Eric. All right. He yeah. says, Indian blankets, these put on a beautiful show in Texas this time of year. Shot with this Sony a7R three, with a 100 to 400 mil lens on it. Very nice. Very nice. This looks, this looks better. Uh, does it look better in the stream than it does on the site? Or, or more saturated? Well, Not better, more saturated. It's more saturated. I think, I think that, you know, we've, gotta, we've really got to realize, like, uh, sometimes more saturation works, and other times it just blows things out, especially warm tones like this. So I do like the additional saturation that we're seeing in the stream, but it's too much. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So if yeah, we look at over the, the board. Yeah, if we look at the twip photo, um, I'm happy with that. I think that in this image, if we bring the highlights up and the shadows down ever so slightly, we'll get that additional saturation and we'll have a little bit more crispness in the image. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's really nice. I, I I think I say it a lot, right? I say crop. Um, okay. I thought you were going to say this would look better in black and white and I was going to have to no, in the stream no. right there. <laughs> No, I, I do think it needs crop though. It's it just, I understand that, that Eric, you're throwing in those out of focus images in the back as part of the frame, but our subject is really what's in focus for me. And I just feel like a looser on the right or tighter on the left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you, on a shot like this, not that he would need to do it on a shot like this, would you have done the old uh, glycerin and water in a split in a in a spray bottle trick and put some little water droplets on this guy. <laughs> um, well, there were a couple water droplets on there. Oh yeah, uh, yeah right on the edge, but more, yeah, more. Yeah, you know, probably. <laughs> I I to be fair, uh, when I would go out and we do the little trail hikes and stuff, I would take a little uh, Mister bottle with me and. Yep. You yeah. know, I'm not a, I'm not afraid to manipulate my scene a little bit. <laughs> Me either. Me either. Just a little bit of, you know, spray on there. It looks like you just caught it right after a rain or yep. the, right after the morning dew or something. Yep. 
Yep. There is, uh, if you look at the, just to the lower left of the flower, maybe three o'clock on the flower, there's a, a green halo'd element that I think needs to come out because it looks right like here, this guy left left like like it I'm sorry I said three o'clock I meant uh nine o'clock yeah oh, just this right here just down a little bit more down oh, down, this. down okay yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. there whatever that is it's probably an out of focus stream in the back or something that it looks like it would be clone like a clone mark but I I'm, a, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's not mm-hmm. I would just darken that up a little bit yep yep dig it very cool shot I like it I like it. By the way, Stephen Sharp is in the chat. He says his highlights on the windows in Copenhagen were not blown. Stephen, <laughs> I, know, I said Steven, that. We know. <laughs> I said it, Stephen. No need to reiterate in text. I said it. <laughs> I know Stephen would never submit an image with blown highlights. I know you that. Know, I can see Stephen's face right now. He's smiling and nodding right now. <laughs> in the stream, it was blown out, and that's what I was looking at. And then. Yeah. My bad. I looked back at the at at Twit to be to be, and it's correct on Twit. Correct. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next up is Mark Charette. Mark Charette says, uh, "Color for ki- colorful kids." He spelled color wrong. Now, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mark knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> colorful kids at the farm. Just a happy snap of some of the children enjoying a day at one of the Food Integrity Group farms. Food Integrity. Interesting. Nice. Nice. There you go. Nice. That's a lot of fun. Uh, a little on the cool side, so I would warm mm-hmm. that up just a little bit, a little better, a little better skin tone. Get rid of that cyan in there. Um, but it's a really fun shot. My absolute favorite part of this image is the little girl in the back that is very intent on going somewhere. Her skirt <laughs> is askew. She's got a bandaid on her leg, and she looks like she's holding a vegetable. <laughs> I mean, I know that's awesome. That is, is, I was like, what's the story right there, right? <laughs> yeah, there's so many expressions going on in there. I just love that. Yeah, um, no, that is cool. That is cool. Yeah, crop I it wonder, a little tighter. I wonder if, and I'm sorry, go ahead. Black. I was going to say, crop it a little tighter and make it black and white, and you've got like this amazing <laughs> photojournalistic shot of these Three kids, different expressions. That's true, but not in a not in a color <laughs> critique. <laughs> so, we need color oh, in the color yeah, critique. Yeah. Would you? Uh, do you think? I don't. Not that this shot needs it, but would do you think Skylooms Luminar can handle putting clouds in those blank spots between the trees? I bet it can. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder if it could. It's, you know, if you do it in a subtle way, and here's the thing about like sky replacements or any kind of Photoshop work is that it needs to not be obvious. So if even if you just put a little bit of blue in those highlights, which you could do in, say, Capture One, you could grab that luminosity mask and just add a color to it. It doesn't feel like it's a hole. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah. Th- again, what that does is the goal of that is keeping us in the frame. So. If you know you're standing in front of this in a gallery, you can just keep looking in that image over and over and over and keep discovering more things without leaving the frame. Yeah, yeah, I like this. I'm getting lost in the shot right now. I know, and plus they're outside and they're not social distancing, and that's wonderful. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that's. <laughs> yeah. Remember when we could hug? <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. It's so sad. See, I was having fun in this critique, and you just brought me down again, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, good shot, Mark Charette. Uh, lo- lovely color in that shot, man. I love it. <laughs> Alicia says it didn't take me too long to say black and white. I wonder how long it, <laughs> it takes. In a- <laughs> See? Yeah, I know. It's easy. All right, Karen Sweeney's up next. Karen says, didn't need the extra day. Uh, this one's from June of last year. The laburnum, laburnum in full flower with some giant hogweed to lead the eyes and uh, to the madness of yellow everything. She shot this with her Nikon. Right. So you give her extra points anyway just for shooting Nikon, right? Yeah. Yeah, everybody gets extra points for Nikon. Yeah, um, you got to get whatever they can get. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give I'm that kidding. to you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love Nikon. <laughs> I started my career with Nikon. I, love I Nikon. know. I know. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the color of those, of those flowers. I, this is, this is one of those kind of images that I think that it feels flat and it's because everything's in focus. 
Mm -hmm. right? Like this is one of those kind of images where you need to get right up into that subject and then create a foreground, a middle ground, and a background where your focus creates depth in the image. I love the color, the image in the center and the hogweed and, and all of that. It's just because it's everything's sharp and everything's in focus, it flattens the image a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and, then, I, and then you have, you have like, who's the hero? I feel like the hero is the, the yellow plant or the tree in the background, yep. right? Um, that's the hero of the shot, so everything else should be subordinate. Do you think? Right. Do you think uh, the shot would be more successful if if um, the foreground and part of the background was blurred in post? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that, or would... even desaturated a little bit, or vignetted or something. I don't well, know. yeah. What I was gonna say is, is you know, take the take that area and just burn it down. You know, mm -hmm. burn down the area behind the tree. It's already kind of there. Uh, if you can soften it and make it look real, that would be ideal. But just burn down that foreground a little bit, burn down that background, take the take the shadows down, and then that yellow is just really gonna pop out. Yeah. And then and then that one hogweed right in front of the tree on the left side, that, that baby's gotta go. The one this one where this seven o'clock right on the tree. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that that's gotta go. It's that's, bothering it's messing with your OCD. <laughs> it's messing with my <laughs> head, yeah. <laughs> and plus if you if you look at the image, right, like all the other hogweed starts in lower left and, and has a path to the right, and then we see the tree. That one that one f solitary flower over on that left is kind of dragging our attention away. So I think that it would also help the flow of the image quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I thought you were going to say, oh, this this shot would be perfect if just in that foreground, right at the six o'clock mark on the tree, there was a bride pensively looking into the distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not in this one. Yeah, those those hogweeds are tall, so we're going to lose okay. a bride in there really quick. Okay. Plus, yeah. I don't like walking through tall grass with brides. They, they're not too hip on that. Yeah, well, poison ivy, poison oak, and all that stuff. Yeah, anything poison or scratchy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. All right. Karen Sweeney, thank you for that. Armando's up next. And he says, uh, Lichtenwall, this is a natural composite of algae fu and fungi. He photographed it with a 12 millimeter and processed it in Lightroom. Let's take a look. Look yeah. at that. That, is that was like so a universe of color right there. <laughs> I call this the I Big Bang. I saw that and I and I didn't know what it was, right? Like if you didn't give me a description, that could be that could be candy, it could be mold on the street, it could be you know what it could be anything, and I think that's what's so fun about it. Um, and I'm glad that that red area is is in the forefront of the image and and compositionally, I think it's wonderful how it balances every all the other colors out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like this a lot. I like the abstractness of it. I mean, it, clearly it fits into the the topic for this this critique color you know this is ex it's an explosion of color but then it draws you in cuz you're like okay what is that what you know you know and then you read the description oh this is algae and fungi i do not want that growing on me and <laughs> <laughs> i think that takes a while to grow so you'll be fine i don't know we've been in quarantine for a while man you don't know what's going on over here <laughs> this is true this is true Oh, I but. like it. This would be a great. I could see this. I like the the black border on this. Uh, you could easily see this blown up big. Um, yeah, it, it, this is a great shot. I like it. I like I like the creativity and the abstractness of it. And how it draws you in. I do, and and you know this is this is uh, Alicia made a comment like this could be a poster in an art class, and I think that's so true because looking at an image like this, it really helps us understand like how our eye is attracted to an image, how color can separate, how depth of field can separate, focus can separate, and help us have depth in our image. So mm -hmm. well done, yeah. Mondo. Yep, like it. All right. Moving right along, we got a lot of community members in here. Eighteen people so far. I know it's great. I feel I feel like they're holding me accountable. Like <laughs> I know you're nervous. You can't talk junk. You can't talk junk I about their work now because they'll call you out. <laughs> I'm still gonna talk crap. That's <laughs> they know. They All right, know. James Glenny, who's in the chat right now, so be careful what you say about his image. Hey, James. James says I had a few ideas about colors for the critique this week, but then we were out for a walk and came across someone's lawn with a ton of little pinwheels out on it for a 50th birthday party. Couldn't resist. All right, let's take yeah, a look. Yeah, this is super fun. 
All right. Look at that. You got motion in there and everything. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I And, and that was one of the things. Like, for this image, if it hadn't been for the motion, um, I think it would have just felt really stagnant. And part of it is because we know what these subjects are. So we know they're pinwheels and we know they should be spinning. And so it, this is true to the subject. Mm -hmm. And there really isn't a sharp spot on the image, probably because everything's moving from the wind and everything, which I just, I think that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It, it's intentional. We always talk about intent. Right. And this one, it's the it's clear that it's not in... It's not a mistake. It's an, an intentional use of motion blur and color, right? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. I like yeah. that. Very Bravo. Cool. What, do you, what do you think about the border? I like it. I, do you, you, know do me. you like it? Do you like it just because James is in the chat now? He's going to talk about you if you say you don't like it? Or do you James really like it? one of my favorite humans this week. He made, me, he made me a magic Excel spreadsheet that just saved me hours of work. So, oh, nice. Nice. Um, no, but I, I do I do like the the key line and the presentation because no matter how you look at this image, it's gonna it's gonna be presented and it's gonna stand off the page no matter how what, what you put it on a black or a white background. And I think that's really important uh, that the image stands out on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, James says he has about two hundred images like this that didn't work. So, you know, it's and then we're right. looking at this one. It's interesting he says that because we look at this one and we say, oh, the, the artist was thinking this and this is intentional that and the motion blur and all that. Right. But we don't see the set that this came out of, which is awesome. The photographer should take that as a, you know, as a lesson. Like no one knows what you went to, to went through to get the final piece. Just own it. Right. You got right. that's the final piece, whether it was intentional, whether it was not, you know, it looks great. And, you know, the pixels are there. You got them. They're yep. yours. Yeah. I can just I can just see, you know, James sitting on the ground working this thing out, like getting it all figured out. And his his family or friends standing around and be like, come on, dude, when are we going to go? That's <laughs> exactly. that's life with a photographer. That's what it's like when you hang out with us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what Could it is. Could be anywhere yeah. at any time, too. There's no rhyme or reason like we're stopping and don't have us bring our drone that's a whole <laughs> another thing right there bringing a the drone on the family vacation like okay is everybody set i'm just gonna run to the beach real quick i'll be right back yeah all right next shot gateway bridge from craig stampley look at this all right this is gateway bridge this is great I that is awesome i like that that just feels like I don't know. Um, it, it feels 1989, or I don't know. It just feels very, or 19, what is it, 1984? Yeah. It feels no, very, it's, very strong and very authoritarian, and boom. Yeah, it's, it's, the lighting's amazing, Craig. Good job on lighting the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, but the high, the highlights, I think the top right corner, I think I would take that down. I think I would really, really work to burn that in. <clears throat> Right, because it's drawing our eyes out of that top right-hand corner, mm -hmm. and then of course the the three colors the 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 red, blue, and green uh, underneath the bridge on the right is just a secondary hook. You know, mm -hmm. those are those wonderful mm -hmm. elements within it within an image that you look at the image and you capture the image and you're like, oh, that's really cool. And then oh, look at this other really neat thing we have over here. Yeah. What do you think about the highlight? And and again, folks that are watching this online, either in the stream or, or after the fact, the highlights in YouTube for some reason on these shots are blown to oblivion. Yeah. But on the actual photo, um, there's detail in the in the, yeah. the highlight, so it's not as bad. It's not bad where YouTube is doing a horrible job of yep. rendering these images. Yep. So, yep. Cool. What do you think? How does this one fit into the color category? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's not really a photo of color, um, and color's not a big part of it, but color is in there. It's a great image. Um, mm -hmm. I just, there isn't a lot of color. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, but I like it. Thank you, Craig Stanfley. All right, moving on to the next shot is from Nora. Uh, Nora Ooh. says, uh, painter's cameo, another Nikon shooter, Nikon D7500. Nice. I, I love, you know, what my favorite part is, is that guy's pant leg. It's, 
<laughs> he's been painting for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. People pay a lot of money for pants like that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is really, this is really solid. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of struggling with the crop a little bit. I feel, you know, part of me says like I want to crop that left side off just a tad to tighten it up to the you know, to the subject matter, which is the guy's painting or the gal's painting. But I like how it's framed with a purple on the left, top left corner and the purple on the right. So mm -hmm. probably yeah. just probably just leave it where it's at. Yeah, I like it like it is. Do you think do you think it needs a vignette or anything to draw attention into the, the paintbrush action I, or just leave it? Let the let the eye kind of go off the screen. I do slightly. I think every image needs a vignette. I, I mean, literally, I think every image can use a little bit of vignette to bring our eyes to the main subject, unless it's naturally vignetted in the in the in the subject matter itself. Um, and when you say vignette, not necessarily darkening vignette, but some sort of element that draws the the viewer's eye into the subject of the shot, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it was it was always taught to us in the dark room in our master printing classes was that you always burn the edges of the print to keep your subject in the in the print in the image itself and I think that digitally that's what I mean by a vignette uh, mm -hmm. is that you know we we want to try to draw our focus by light by by focus uh, by foreground, middle ground, background type elements. And that, so in this case, yeah, if you were able to burn or darken the outside edges ever so slightly up to the subject matter, it'll draw our attention there even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I'm wondering, like, does the guy behind in the orange, does he ever like just accidentally put a yellow, a little yellow swatch on the dude's orange? Like, <laughs> I would. That's that's <laughs> what I would do. <laughs> I think they're walking backwards painting, so then it would be the orange dude putting a little mark on the yellow, be like, hey. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Or mess up the green and the blue, the green and the blue guys work. <laughs> cool. All right. Thank you, Nora, for that. Very Good job. Cool. I want to know what they're painting. It looks like they're, you know, like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm, I wonder. Maybe some sort of street art or something? I don't know. All right. Uh, Mark Harris is up next. Mark says, although not rare, Baltimore Orioles are not seen are not seen often in my area. Okay. He shot this with his Nikon D850. Nikon again? Yeah. What is happening here? Yeah. Well, it's the bomb. <laughs> in a good way in a good way yeah uh you know this is one of those images that you know because we talked about vignetting uh this is one of those images that i think could really benefit from that is just a little additional burning around around the bird um to kind of bring our focus into the bird and a little additional saturation you know burn down that branch just a bit because the tones if you were to convert this to black and white you'll notice that the the breast of the Oriole and the leaves and the branches are all kind of the same tone. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. kind of, you know, converting something to black and white will also help you see where your eye's going to be drawn. And you can also flip an image upside down or just rotate it 90 degrees and see where your eyes go. And if your eyes aren't going to the subject matter that you want your viewer to see, then, then you need to work that image a little bit. Yeah. This is one of those classic ones. Like you said, it definitely needs some, I mean, we know what the subject is, obviously. Sure, because of the color. But, yeah, but maybe pop that color a little bit more. And like you said, some element to draw the user, user, the viewer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm in software mode. Yeah. Um, the viewer into the subject, which is the, the Oriole. Maybe it's a vignette. Maybe it's uh, desaturating the leaves around it. Something, you know, so that it pops in. But it's yeah. a cool shot. Well, I love the composition. I love the leading lines of the branches, top and bottom, that are that are slided to draw into the bird a little bit. Um, Is that bird sharp? No, that bird's not sharp. No, he's not sharp. But he's close. But he's he's okay. Mm -hmm. He's a happy bird. He doesn't mind. <laughs> he doesn't mind. <laughs> he doesn't mind being a little fuzzy. He's okay. he's okay. Yeah, it does look a little bit off, but ever so slightly. All right, Mark Harris. Thank you for that. Mark Domke's up next. Look at that color. Mark says, here's one I recently posted to show and tell. I got some positive comments on the mix of colors, so I thought I'd get your critique. This is in Rue de la Harpe in Paris in 2018. Yeah, this is this is great. And, and I will say that in the stream, the color saturation is more 
of what I think it should be, where I think the, the shadows need to come down almost to blocking up, super saturate the red, you know, really make it more of a street scene. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that blue in the back, I love how it's deep and saturated. For me, the my favorite element is you've got that blue tone, and then you've got that neutral tone, and then you've got that red tone, and how it's stacked vertically. Yeah, it just it's just so great. Um, yeah, it's nearly perfect, except it's tilted to the right, just a is little. It? Yeah, did you test it? Did you bring it into Photoshop and draw lines on yep, it? You did, I didn't did. you? <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't need to because I could tell. Oh man, yeah. And it's yeah. hard to it's hard to tell because the right edge is vertical against that window, but then the building itself, the the big building in the middle is actually tilted slightly to the right. So it's it's a little bit distorted. It's super easy to fix. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just just run that vertical correction, um, the parallel. I can't, correction. It's so funny. I can't see that at all because I'm looking like I'm looking at the vertical line on this building. It looks vertical. It's not. Me. It's off a little bit. It's oh, oh, what's the matter with you? And if it's it, it, even even if the building is built that way, I say fix it because mm -hmm. it's it's even if it's though it's unnoticeable, like if you can't identify it right away, fix it anyway, unless it's part of the architecture. But fix it because yeah. it it's one less distraction. Yeah, I tell you, when I was uh, last time I was in Paris, I had the best burger and fries. I've ever had at a brasserie that looks just like this one sitting outside in a chair that looks exactly like those. It was amazing. It was amazing. It makes me hungry just looking at that place. They're counting how many times I've referenced black and white. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make that a drinking game <laughs> at the next. <laughs> we're gonna make it a mixing game or a drinking game at uh, one of the next critiques. So get your drinks ready and prepare to be drunk. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I drink every time I say black and white. Every time Troy says black or white, you have to take a drink. <sighs> yeah, uh, this is definitely one. Or of my bride, favorite. or bride. Yeah, black and white or bride. But this is definitely one of my favorite images, Mark. That was that was it, and then uh, beautiful. So, yeah, yeah. Next one's from Michael Rhino. Michael says, <clears throat> "My entry for the photo critique color theme is purple." He always takes pictures of places I wish I was. Yeah, that you or you were at right now. Yeah, right? that's what yeah. I mean. I wish I yeah. was there. I wish I were there. I wish I was sitting right there with a beverage. You just want a home where the buffalo roam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, this is this is just wonderful. I really love the the composition. I like the fact that the horizon isn't dead center in the middle. I like that it's in the upper thirds, and we still get to see the mountain and the clouds. So. Yeah. Yeah, I dig that too. Yeah, it's very cool. This is a classic shot. Definitely, you can almost smell the flowers in this one and the fresh air out there. Yeah, yeah. I've never been. I've never actually photographed lavender in in real. I mean, I've never been in a lavender field, so that's one thing I've yeah. never seen. Well, there you go. Well, you my, know what it smells like, and now you know what it looks like. So you're you're pretty much there. Well, I know what my essential oil smells like, so I don't know if that's what they really <laughs> smell like. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Your essential facsimile of the real thing. Uh, my only, my only nitpick or my only critique would be to get rid of the power lines in the background. There's on the on the left of the on the horizon. Oh yeah, look at your nitpickery in full tilt today. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> your nitpickery superpowers yeah. are in full effect. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. So James Glennie in the chat says, oh, gods, no, we'll all be trash if we do the drinking game <laughs> thing. I like that that he used gods, plural, like yeah. they do in Battlestar Galactica. So. <laughs> yes, right. yes. Very cool. All right. Moving right along. Thank you, Michael Rhino. Next shot is from Lamb. Lamb says, my, photo, my entry for photo critique theme color. He shot this in March 2019. Um, what is Nikon yeah, D3? D3. <laughs> yeah, I, I Jeez, love those colors. We got a lot of Nikons in the community and a lot of cats. So, <laughs> a lot of cats, yes, <laughs> cats yeah. and Nikons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really I love everything about this, and I know it's going to sound a little, a little pseudo cliche. Um, but I think we need to crop off the shadow on the left, just get rid of the green and purple doors, mm -hmm. and it's about right here, right. Yeah, and then and then you've got that yellow and pink 
you know, painted window. And then you got that divider with the, the post or, you know, the column and the street light. And then you've got the other half, the other two thirds of the image. And I feel it's a better balance as well. Yeah. Yeah. It would make it more symmetrical and kind of center that YY48 in there. The, right. Based on what you said about the the vertical lines in that other image, if you did that, you it become even more obvious that that top line is not parallel. Would you rotate the image so that this top line, this ridge here or this ledge is is parallel with the frame? Yeah, I mean, yes. What I, I would I would fix the horizontal lines in here so that they're parallel, and then I would probably rotate it slightly to the left so the line so the lines are vertical. Um, but they're still par they're still parallel, right? I wouldn't fix the distortion, the the leading lines or the um, converging lines. I would leave them. Yeah. But it is leaning to the left, and probably because it's shot on an angle. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like. I love the color in here. I do Especially, love. The color. I actually like the color. I like the destruction, at least of the color that YouTube is doing to this image. <laughs> so it's oversaturating it and is. making those colors pop. Uh, but then again, it's destroying the highlights. So it is, it is. And, and to be fair to anybody watching the stream, um, the images on TWIP, e even in mighty, even in the mighty network platform, they tend to crush the colors a little bit. They look highlights are there. The highlights in the column are there. Uh, there, there's detail in the windows. Yeah. Yep. Yep. YouTube was not, or YouTube streaming was not designed uh, for accurate color. Right, condition, right, I don't think. right, yeah. Beautiful streetscape. Yep, love it, love it. All right, uh, next shot is from Michael Duray. Uh, color overload, let's just let this one load in. <laughs> look <at that. laughs> let's take a look. All right, is that oversaturated? What's going on here? Let's see. Yeah, I mean, on on the stream, it's a little oversaturated, definitely. Yeah, but even even in the on the actual shot, it might be a little bit on the right of saturation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is this is a really really fun shot. I, I actually think the bet the best composition of this image, however, is just to crop in on the squirrels. I don't think we need the flags, or I think that's additional color that we don't need, and additional distraction. And I think like, the, a, like a crop, a crop like this, like right around these. Yeah, get all three squirrels in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I th and then then you've got just that single color of the yellow and the corn, which is great because that's that single element. And then that that one squirrel in the front that's just you know not giving a care. Because yeah. he's got his corn. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, he's watching you to make sure you don't mess with that corn, but yeah. he's eating it at the same time. Yeah, and those are some well-fed squirrels. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> well-fed squirrels. They definitely are. Those are yeah. American squirrels right there. <laughs> Look at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wasted all that food. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Very cool. I like this shot a lot. Color overload of the American squirrels. All yeah. right. And I think this is the last shot. Yeah, the last shot is from Mike Dorn. The one with uh, no color. Yeah, Mike says, I revisited a portrait shot in November during American Super Camp um, of a friend. This was shot with Olympus o, uh, EM1X and the Zico uh, 1240 Pro. Uh, yeah. And he tried out a new technique in black and white. That's great, Mike, but this was a color critique. I don't <laughs> So I love the portrait. I think I think it's I think it's I think it's great. I'd crop a little bit off on the left, um, get rid of some of the, those backgrounds so that she has more room in front of her. Mm, uh, you mean like move her like in in the shot itself, or no, crop, just crop just, out in the in post. Yeah, just crop crop up from the bottom so you don't lose the Yamaha if that's important, and then just tighten in on the left so that she has right now. There's more space behind her <clears throat> than in front. And I think it would really be nice to really just focus on her face and not have those people in the background, even though wait they've minute, been burned down. But th this is from Mr. Um, I hate amputating people and cutting limbs off. You're suggesting cutting more of her limb off. Uh, but it would be better because right now her arm is amputated at the wrist, her right arm. Yeah. Because yeah, it looks it like is. she's sitting on her bike. So you're so, suggest you're suggesting chopping more of her arm off. Yeah, instead. properly. Okay. Since we already properly got started, she lost yeah. the hand. She doesn't care. Yeah. We can just take off the yeah, forearm right too. Right up to the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see what you're just saying. Make it more of a head and shoulder shot. Yeah. 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 
But cool. But not color. But not. <laughs> all right. Of all the shots, uh, we have that was the last one, by the way. Thanks everyone for for your submissions. Lots of color yep. this week. Um, of all these shots, do you have one that pops out to you as okay? That's the winner. Uh, Mark Domkey's Mark is Domke. definitely a favorite. Which one was that one? Uh, Got to go down the buildings, the Italian street, the blue, red. This one, okay. Got yeah, it. yeah. Okay. I just, I just, I love that. I mean, the the image is tack sharp all the way through. So, I mean, the technical execution is well done. Uh, we've got good subject matter in the lower right. Uh, the blank space lower left. I wish there was something there, but we can, we can, you know, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love the color harmony. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I don't know if I love it because it brings back memories, or if I love it because of the the shot itself, um, or maybe both. Right? It doesn't yeah. have to be an or. Yeah, I like the shot too. When my my favorite, I think of the bunch, those Armando's. Oh, this, really? Yeah. Yeah, this is color, right? I mean, it, like if you if you're talking color, this is color. It, it also makes me feel kind of weird because I know I'm looking at fungus and algae. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many living organisms are we looking at? This is like a more living organisms in this shot than are on the entire planet. Right? Probably, I don't so, know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. To to be fair, my my one, two, and three would be uh, Mark Domkey's. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen Sharp's would be my second because I love that street view shot of the bikes and the wall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one. Yeah. Let's bring that up. Yeah, that yeah. would definitely be my number two. That's a that's a tough competitor between the two, but I think I like I this. I like this one now too. God, it's, <laughs> it's like picking your favorite kid. Yeah, oh. I'm going with Mark. I'm going to I'm going to go with Mark's. There's You're going to work. OK, more right. color, more punch. All more, right, let's go down to Mark. You know, know what? Since since we are kind of undecided on this a little bit and we're doing this live and we have 24 people watching this <laughs> chat room uh, of those of those images, which do you like the best? Uh, or if there's if there's one in there that we didn't mention that you like the best, sound off in the chat now. I'm curious. Oh yeah, yeah. Let us know live, live while we record this. That's right. Um, They're all gonna vote for theirs, aren't they? <laughs> of course. When you come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, all right. So we need to let's let let's let the let, let the chat room kind of. Uh, percolate on percolate that a little, a little bit, bit. Yeah. yeah you guys percolate on that a little bit while troy and i vamp and uh figure out what's going to be what the <laughs> what the final final is i'm happy with marks i like marks i don't yeah uh, yeah uh, but i also like armando's armando's is pretty good too and so was stevens so <laughs> <laughs> and so is everybody else's yeah but we have to pick one and and we pick marks do we have to really do we have to have a favorite <laughs> like does there have to be a favorite that's like picking yes, your favorite there has song. to be a winner <sighs> Come on, come on! It's 2020. Everybody's a winner, right? No, <laughs> no. Can't we just give a participation award? Come on. Ugh. It's All not. Right. It's not. It's not a winner. It's a favorite, which is different. That's true. Yeah. That's let's be favorite. careful about that. That's not. This is not a winning, a win lose thing. It's a favorite, which is yeah. completely subjective. Yeah. Uh, people are saying Italy. Italy. It'll, or I'm oh, sorry, Paris. Oh, Paris. 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 Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll go with Paris. What's our next Fine. topic? Um, yeah. What is our next topic? Wait, let me bring this back up so people can see what the choice is. Um, so many buttons over here. There we go. Let's go to that and then go to that. There you go. That's the shot. That's this week's favorite yeah. shot. Yeah. So. Well, you guys, since you guys are in the chat, <clears throat> you know you could influence the next topic by throwing some ideas out there. Mm. Um, because we we haven't we haven't settled on one yet. I by the time I pull up my list of topics, you know, somebody could throw something in there. Yeah. What do you think? Or else I'm gonna pick one. So. Oh, do you have one? <laughs> I don't have one, but I could <laughs> I have an imagination. I could easily pick one. You know, color is pretty easy. You know, so the next beyond color, the next obvious choice is what Mike Doran got a got a head start on, right? So maybe we should do maybe we should do a black and white topic. That's what I'm saying. Black and white. <laughs> Mike Doran got a head start on it. So, so there we'll you just go. move that shot to next week, Mike. You don't have to. Um, okay, so. La Duterina is saying movement. 
oh, man's Tim best friend. Pinhole. pinhole from Tim Ingle. Tim, it's right here. I made I made my my pinhole camera. <laughs> oh, you made one, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. The largest pinhole camera I ever saw was the size of a truck. You ever seen one of those? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's too much work for me. That's a lot of work. It's some hard composition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, what do you think, Troy Miller? What's uh, what's next week? So I'll, I'll leave it to you in the community. Drum roll, please. I'm, it's out of my hands. I'm uh, relinquishing let's, control. Let's do black and white, and let's do the drinking game for the next critique. Black and oh. <laughs> you can't, That means every shot. <laughs> that, that doesn't work, Troy. Come on. That doesn't work. I, the I, whole I, idea is if a shot is not originally in color, no. you making the suggestion that it be black and white. That's when love, the drink happens. I would love to see black and white. I would love to see black and white. Didn't we just okay. do that, though? I feel like we did. All I right. I feel like we did. Maybe we mix them. Uh, so let's, uh, how about we do black and white and motion or movement? Oh, because I, I was going to say the same thing because Ladoon Arena just made that comment a movement. So, uh -huh. all right, black and white in motion. Black and white in, or black and white movement, just to be true yeah. to La Dude Arena. Yeah. All right, I'm writing that down. You can see that on the site in like an hour. Black and white and movement. Yeah. I have to write things down because my memory is gone. <laughs> Everything has to be written down. <laughs> well, cool. We did it, man. We got this critique done. Color, 115. We finally got it done. Uh, despite all all challenges, we will not be silenced. We got it done, <laughs> and it's a live stream. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, there's a new name in there. Look at look in the chat. There's a new name. I in know there. Margie's in there. Margie's in there. Now she knows that I'm actually up here doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You can't hide. I can't. You can't hide. No. All right. Well, cool. Well, thanks everyone for for joining us on this live stream. Um, plan to do lots lots more live streaming as I get yeah, this whole yeah. constellation. You guys can take a look at what's going on behind the scenes here. Um, so as I get this whole constellation that you're looking at right here all dialed in and set up to do all this stuff, um, doing live streams will be much much easier than than it was before. Yep. Lots of stuff programmed on these buttons, so when I press things, stuff happens. Sometimes. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Not like, yeah, this morning it took a half hour to get it up and running. Oh, yeah, and sometimes it's just simple. Sometimes you just have a brain fart, and it's like, uh, okay, it's supposed to do this, and it's not doing that. Well, it's not supposed to do that. So, right, right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. This is this whole world of streaming and, and live is, is insane. Perfect. Well, cool, man. All right, well, thank you. Thanks, Troy, for hanging in there and yeah. doing this late and uh, being accommodating. Congratulations on your what was it the 59th wedding anniversary you just <laughs> 29 <laughs> yesterday yeah. 29 I years know. round of applause throw throw an emoji in the chat <laughs> for for troy and margie's 29th wedding anniversary yeah, that's a that's that's a hat trick in 2020 for sure so thank you thank you for uh for setting the standard for the rest of us troy Thanks, Miller and yeah. Margie. yeah we started in like 83 so Oh, should I bring that picture up? Where's no, that? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't have that queued on your stream I deck. I don't have it queued up. <laughs> it should be. Oh, it's a, I don't have it. All right. God, the one time I need it, I don't have it. All right. Well, next time. Next All right. Time. All right, folks. Well, thank you for, uh, for hanging in there with us. And uh, yeah, well, before we end this, Give this stream or this video or whatever a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm can, you know, give us some love or something. Otherwise, you know, a tree is falling in the forest and not making a dent in the algorithm. <laughs> so right, right. Go ahead and give us a thumbs up before we end the stream. And, uh, oh, by the way, while you're clicking the thumbs up thing, I am, uh, if you're not going, if you're not uh, participating in that NAB post-production post world, thing you could still sign up for it because i think they're they're going to be showing the replays for that event for the next 180 days so if you if you weren't able to go live you could still sign up and go i believe if you are attending the sessions the my last session is today at 6 p.m pacific where i will be and here's the reason why this, this scene is set up i will be discussing all of this and what the mindset and methodology of of setting everything up like this is I actually ordered, um, uh, Troy, you'll be interested in this. I ordered a, uh, what do you call it here? You'll put it on you. 
I ordered a what is it, fifteen foot long HDMI cable. We'll uh-huh. see if we'll see if an HDMI signal can travel that far. Yeah, it will. <laughs> to uh, to connect to this floating camera, so I can actually walk around the room with yeah, my nice. DJI Ronin and show people what my setup looks like while I narrate it. You know, yeah. with a little lav mic on. So yeah, to be should be interesting. Um, uh, we, had right. a, we had a question in the chat, like, how do you, how do we join these or how do we participate? So there are probably some people that have jumped into the the stream that aren't aware of Twit Pro. So uh, Twit Pro is the community where these images are submitted that we're critiquing them from. So that's twitpro.com. Yep. You can go and check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's where 90% of the people in the chat are from. So. Yeah, yeah, join us over there. Thank you. I didn't even think about that. I'm such a bad marketer. Uh, (laughs) Yes, twitpro.com, my child. So yeah, yeah, please please head over there and join us. That is, it's literally, I think for me, and I would argue a lot of people have been sort of like our our lighthouse in the fog of a pandemic, right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) It literally has been like that. Like, okay, you know, there are other humans on the planet that are interested in photography and the planet is still spinning. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Definitely definitely join us over there if you can. Twitpro.com. Yeah. It's a it's a good time. Lots of lots of adults and smart people and by adults I mean not age-wise, more of just mature photographers that are helping each other versus, you know, my stuff is better than your yeah. stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love it. All right, folks, we're going to shut this one down and uh, we'll see you guys in the community at the member mixer this Friday. And by the way, folks that are part of the community, every Friday at 6 p.m. we do a Zoom virtual member mixer where everyone just hangs out, shoots the breeze. We make fun of Peter Levshin and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and otherwise have a great time at Peter's expense sometimes. But Always, Peter's, yeah. Peter can give as good as he could take, so yes. it's easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy. All right. Well, see you guys later. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us. All right. All right. Stream is ending right now.